Good morning. I say again, good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. I was glad when they said to me, let us come to the house of the Lord. We're going to sing praise this morning. I'm glad to everybody here this morning to be a part of the motion. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I'm so happy this morning. We could have been in a thousand other places. We could have been asleep, dead, sleeping in our grave. But the Lord saw fit to wake us up this morning. To wake us up this morning. I say again, to wake us up this morning. I'm glad this morning. Hallelujah to his name. Hallelujah to his name. Praise God. Been 
my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O oh God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O oh Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over to the will of my enemies, for false witness are risen up against me, and such as breathe cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait. I say, wait on the Lord. Fourteen. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait. I say, wait on the Lord. I read you Psalm 27 in its entirety. God's word for God's people. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. I Thank you, Lord. 
Father, just help us to just do the things that you would have for us to do. Yes, Lord. Father, we know not what to pray, Lord, but we know that you know what we need. Yes, and we Lord. just ask that you give it to us, Lord. Just give it to us, Lord. Have mercy on us, Lord. And thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Yes, Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I tell you, it's a great morning because God smiled on us this morning. In the midst of everything that's going on, he smiled on us today. So can we give God a praise? Just being so good. So we have in the middle of the house. Your name is not on this roster, but you raise your hand so we can give you a round of applause. Because we thank you so much for making new set in your place of worship on today. Well, I see that we don't have any visitors. And as pastors say, we are a one church for one people. So let's continue to be the people of God that God has called us to be. Just know that I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. And make sure you have a great, prosperous, and productive week. Love you. to know 
uh, pastor wants to meet with you immediately after service. So please don't leave. Talk to him before you leave. Any parent with school age children, we are asking you, please, ma'am, please, sir, remain at the church and speak with pastor. Amen. Revival was October the 8th, 9th, and 10th. That's a Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. We want you 6th, 7th, and 8th. 6th, 7th, and 8th. Okay. Okay, my bad. Six, seven, and eight. I guess the six is on the Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll be here at, at three o'clock, right, Pastor? Right. Yeah. Three o'clock Sunday. We'll start revival. It'll be seven o'clock on Monday and Tuesday. Amen. Um, announcement. There's a free dental service being provided by St. Matthew's Church for the uninsured. It will be set, uh, Saturday, well, September the 24th through the 25th uh, at St. Matthew's Church on Pendleton. They're going to have free dental service. If you know somebody or if you're interested in free dental service, please um, let us know. It's on the 24th and 25th of September. They'll also have free clothing giveaways and Everything is free that day, so we're encouraging you. If you need some dental work and you ain't got no insurance, that's the place to be. Amen. Amen. Uh, also, we want to acknowledge brother and sister Cheers on the 31st wedding anniversary. Amen. And we want to uh, wish Sister Shanta Jones a happy birthday. We are telling age. <laughs> Those are announcements for the week. Please govern yourself accordingly.
How did I make it all these years? How did I make it this far? Through the valleys and over the heat. I know it had to be God. How did I make it through the storm? How did I make it through the rain? If you want to know just how I got here, so easy to explain. It was God.
Amen. If everybody had a chance to give. Amen. Amen. pray. Our Father, our Father in heaven, oh God, give us this day. Oh, I thank you for this offering that was placed upon you this morning. Oh, God, thank you for the ones that gave in our hearts, Lord, for the ones that had the money to give. And also bless the ones that did not have the money, but had the heart to give. Oh, God, bless them as well. Oh, praying for this, Lord, for the uplift of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. Ever since then, but I know exactly what it is. It's him, and he's 
pull yourself. Grace runs out. God bless your heart. Let me just reiterate these two things because I don't like to have announcements after I preach. I want you to go home on the word. So Smith might sing a song before we go home. I don't know what the plans are. She just might. But on the fifth Sunday of this month, on the fifth Sunday of this month, we're just not visiting St. Matthew. It is actually a joint worship, a joint worship experience. And we go on to them and they'll come back to us when we call. But I want all of our members to be there. And it's the missionary day, and wear white as you can. But for heaven's sake, if you can, please go to St. Matthew on the fifth Sunday. We're going to have Sunday school here and worship in St. Matthew's at 10 o'clock. If you need transportation, it's just called a note. We'll arrange it. But it can't be last minute. And if you don't tell us, we don't know. Please be there. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, October 6th, 7th, and 8th is our revival. Our revival Sunday will start at 3 o'clock. And on Mondays and Tuesday, it will be at 7 o'clock. The evangelist will be Pastor Lewis from St. Matthew's Mission Baptist Church. Uh, we need some food or some outdoor activities or something to hold us from the time we get out to 3 o'clock. So men plan something. Uh, we also need an event, car wash or something, fish fry or something. And I'll tell you why we're doing this. We're trying to detach you for revival. You know, we can ask people to give $50 for revival, blah, 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 blah. But with every time... People don't have it. And so when we have a event, an event like this, please support it. Amen. It takes pressure off the membership. So we'll come up with something between now and then. Uh, but I'm looking at uh, me and my, maybe that Saturday before. The first Saturday in October, we're going to be planning something. So please support us. That way, I have to ask you anything. If you got some for revival, give it if you don't. But we want to make sure we're able to take care of our responsibilities. On Wednesday, October 16th, mark that date. I'll be in here at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, for a Bible study. Choir rehearsal will have to be at 7 o'clock. We'll have double security. Amen. So you can feel comfortable. Arm security, double arm security. Amen. I, I'm having to make that change because the Sunday rehearsal. While it may be convenient, is in, interfering with the ministry of things I need to do after service on Sundays. Amen. This is a small building, and it's hard to do two things at one time. Amen. The small building, I can't have a conference in my study because I hear straight through there. And I need the deacons to take care of some things after service. Uh, and two of them are in the choir, three of them, or three of them coming will be in the choir. And so uh, it's necessary. So we're going back to Wednesday Bible study at 6 o'clock. Choir versus 7 o'clock, we have double security outside so you can feel safe. I will continue the Bible for the stream uh, because the stream is for more than just New Salem. Uh, we've got people nationwide who are sending in nice contributions to our church ministry uh, because of uh, those streams. And so we're trying to get that word out. Parents, 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 if you've got children that you know need to be in Sunday school, let us know. If you can't make it, we can. Let me tell you about the old church. There has never been a time in church history where everybody brought all their children to Sunday school. What the church did have was some folk who would stop by and pick them up. Are you are y'all with me? Sometimes you can't be here. But let us know and we're gonna arrange to get these children to Sunday school because until we start doing better in church, the world's not gonna be any better. So if you got children that you would have ready, they got to be ready when we come pick them up. Amen. We've already had a volunteer drive, and we got to get a van, a bus, whatever we're going to do. We want to these children in Sunday school because we've got to start teaching them. Uh, we watched the movie at the Forge, and if you all get it, I don't advertise, but go watch that movie. Because they tell you at the end of the movie that it's time out. Churches, are, while we're calling people to Christ, we're doing a pitiful job discipling them in Christ. And that's why the world is, we, 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 we bring it in comfort, we just turn them out wild. They're growing up like wild weeds. We got to start discipling these young folk kind of age. Otherwise, they're not going to be in the church after we pass off the scene. So if you have any school-age children or any, any Sunday school-age children, or if you want 
you know somebody who wants who want to come to Sunday school and can't get here, amen, let us know, and we will take care of those things. God bless your heart. God bless your heart. Come on, Maya. Amen. 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 I'm going to try, we're going to try to get in the gift today. Y'all continue to pray for Sister Smith. Amen. She's not crying outside because everyone might hurt her. Well, you know what I'm She's hurting, I'm hurting too. And I'm asking the Lord for strength. She is coming from 1 Kings 17. If you would turn to this and on your feet, 1 Kings 17. She's going to start from verse 8 and read through 16. God bless your heart. I want to use this thought. How to be blessed through your distress. How to be blessed through. Not to be stuck in it. But how to let God bless you all the way through your distress. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And believers find their joy in the Lord. But there's a difference between joy and happiness. Joy comes from so deeply within that no man can reach it. Therefore, no man can take it. But happiness is a surface emotion that we wear on our shoulders. That can be knocked off or thumped off your shoulder at any time. And in this life, our happiness is a simple reflection of our resources. Old folks said the same thing that make you laugh will make you cry. The more we have, the happier we are. The less we have, the sadder we are. Our expressions on payday are very different than they are on bill day. Y'all with me? See, the robber know exactly when to rob us. All they have to do is just look at our expression. Because nothing lights up our face like a fresh big old pile of money. <laughs> All the mugger has to do is just watch your face. You come out of Walmart cussing and grumbling, he know your car didn't go through. <laughs> he ain't got no money, no bags. Uh-uh, he ain't gonna bother you. The carjacker knows when he see your car stop 
on a dollar twenty five cent worth of gas, not to carjack your car because he can't get far. Crooks look for those who are whistling and swinging lots of shopping bags. Are y'all here with me? If you're at the ATM frowning, kicking the machine, and your car didn't come back out, <laughs> you safe. Ain't nobody gonna hit you over the head. The mother probably that ran away scared you're gonna take his money. When our resources are low, we're tight fisted and tight jaw and tight lips. Because we become tense, stressed, distressed, and depressed. But negative emotions are like quicksand. The more you wiggle in negativity, the faster and the deeper you sink. Are y'all here with me? We must learn when we're in distress to stop wiggling. Amen. And begin to reach up. You can't be pulled up until you first reach up. Y'all miss what I said. You got to reach up in order for somebody to pull you up. Paul says in Philippians, he says, was whatever things honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Set your affections on things above. Colossians 3, 1 said, if ye be risen with Christ, seek the things which are above where Christ sits. Set your affections above and not on things of this earth. The truth of the matter is that when I'm stressing, I'm in need of a blessing. But the good thing is when I am in distress, I'm also in position to be blessed. Y'all just missed what I said. And if we reach to the Lord, we can be blessed through our distress. One with his blood was blessed after 12 years of distress. Man by the pool of Bethesda was blessed after 27 years, 28 years in distress. Blind by the males was blessed on Jericho Road in the midst of his distress. He blessed Jairus by raising his daughter out of his distress. What to name and bless the widow out of her stress. Notice he blessed the father by raising the daughter. And he blessed the mama by raising the son. Then he went down to Bethany and blessed Lazarus in his distress. Now, now death is a distress. But he said, Lazarus come forth. And he blessed Lazarus out of his distress. He blessed Daniel in the lion's den. That was distress. He blessed the Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. That was distress. He blessed 10 lepers on the way. That was distress. God can bless you through your distress. But he has instructions. He told the lepers to go show yourself to the prayer. Y'all here with me. You got some instruction. But if you follow God's instruction, if you call Jesus, like by the man said, oh, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He'll give you some instructions to help you be blessed through your distress. That's why David said, Yea, though I walk through my distress, I feel no evil because I know thou art with me to bless me through my distress. In this text, this woman, we count a woman who's truly in distress. Why? Because for years there's been no rain, not even in the dew. Sometimes the dew can be so thick on place you don't need any rain. But when there was no dew, that means the famine was a complete disaster, a complete famine. And God tells Elijah to go down to the brook. And there he'll find water and feed him. Sometimes you got to separate yourself from the folk God are cursing. Y'all with me? But some of us love some cursed folks so much, we stay and, and be part of the curse with them. But sometimes you got to pack up and go. 
Don't stay on this ship with Jonah. If Jonah won't jump, you jump. Y'all hear me? Jerry Cloward told a joke about this man fighting that lynx up in that tree. He told that man, somebody shoot this thing. Did this thing kill me? Somebody shoot it. And the man said, I can't shoot up there. I might miss it and shoot you. He said, we'll shoot up here monsters. He said, God, one of us got to have some relief. Sometimes you ain't got to separate yourself. He told Lightning to go down to the brook. He sent ravens to bring him food and water from the brook until the brook dried up. Y'all with me? Then he sent it to pad. Well, woulda will sustain him. Y'all, y'all here with me. He was saving Elijah to save the woman. See, all the time, God ain't blessed because he's so in love with you. Sometimes he's saving you to use you to save somebody who really needs saving. Are y'all here with me? Elijah gets there and he sees his widow. And she ain't got nothing. See, but don't worry about what you see when you get there. Because God sent you there for a reason. And it may look like they ain't got nothing. But if God sent you there, they got exactly what you need. Y'all, I, 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 need, I need some help in here. I need some, I need some help in here. And so he sends a widow to sustain him. But when Elijah gets there, the woman is reluctant to feed him. She had no problem giving him some water because that was a whole lot of water. But when it came to food, that was a problem. Because like us, we'll only give what we think ain't running out. And some of us still won't give it because we just stingy. Y'all hear me? Stinginess is ungodly. God loves a cheerful giver. And if you have a problem giving, you need to ask the Lord, Lord, work on me. Watch this. This woman was so stuck on her condition, her situation, that she couldn't even see deliverance at hand. But sometimes you have to look past your distress in order to be blessed. Elijah would tell a woman you ain't got nothing because your fist is too tight. If you would just trust God and open up your hand, God can put some in it. Y'all with me? The woman said, wait a minute. You forgot. I'm a widow. Ain't got no hug. That's a problem. I'm a single mother. That's a problem. I have no spousal support. That's a problem. I have no family support. That's a problem. I've got no money to buy food if there was food. That's a problem. I ain't got no food to buy. That's a problem. And now I'm down to my last meal. Elijah, if I had I'd give it to you. But I just ain't got it. What a sad testimony for a child of God who have been running around here hollering and my God shall supply all of my needs. I just ain't got it. The woman had very little to cook and very little to cook with. I ain't got but five little sticks. And if I don't get this bread down before they burn up, I'm still in trouble. Now here you come. Help the man of God. Begging me who ain't got nothing. You know, I'm I'm wondering now. How do folk who don't get in church nothing expect to have the church to have something to get in? Amen. Amen. Let me 
can get a sip of coffee. You don't put nothing in the church. Don't come, don't sin, don't do nothing. But you expect your church to be able to help you in time of trouble. Uh, y'all, 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 hear me. And so she said, here this man come asking me for what he ought to be giving me. The woman said, you said God sent you. So it looked like if God sent you and he know my condition, he ought to send you with something. But listen, all the time when you need a blessing, finances is not what God going to send you. Are you with me? Do you want this dollar I got? You want to know why I got the dollar? Are you all here with me? If I give you this dollar I got when that dollar gone, you back in the same shape. But if I tell you why I got the dollar and how I got the dollar, then when I'm going to see you, are able to do for yourself. Y'all, y'all, y'all hear me? So sometimes you don't need money, you need information and direction. But Elijah was in stress. She was so busy seeing her distress, she couldn't see him. He just made on the run. Because he's told Israel what they didn't want to hear. And it came to pass. That's why God said, Elijah, I need you to go to safety. Y'all, y'all, y'all hear me? Sometimes we so caught up in our own problem, we wouldn't even consider helping nobody think my problems are always worse than yours. Your tooth couldn't be hurt as bad as mine. Your migraine can't be bad as mine. You can't be broke as I am. See, folk love getting a pity contest. My problem is always bigger than yours. And so she's so caught up that she couldn't see his situation. And she couldn't see how God sent him to a widow in the stress to find his blessing. Y'all hear me? Sometimes God moves in a mysterious way and when he sends you somewhere, you'll be scratching your head too. I thought you would send me somewhere to eat. This woman ain't got nothing. But never be surprised where God sends you. If he can't send you nowhere, he won't send you nowhere. Y'all, y'all, y'all hear me? We serve a God who will send you in the emptiness to find fullness. He'll send you in the leanness to find the fat. He'll send you in the sorrow to find your joy. He'll send you in the despair to find your hope. He'll send you to loneliness to find your friend. He'll teach you to send you to misery to find your mastery. He'll teach you how to be blessed through your distress. We look at this lesson today. The first step to being blessed through your distress is rely on the Lord. Relying on her step and what she had, the Bible says the woman planned to die. That's the worst plan in the world. If that's the best you can come up with, you may you need a plan. But any plan that does not include God is a plan to die. God desires to be your first and only plan with no backups. Because every backup is a lack of faith. Are you with me? The folk in your life who are, are a problem are still a problem because you don't pray for them. Y'all missed what I said, did It's a bad plan 
to drive in rush hour. And all you asked God to do was guide your car. What about the other cars he, he, want, he need to guide? God, keep my car on the road. Uh-uh. But I hope you keep other cars in their in land. It's a bad plan to send your child out to school without asking God to guide their steps. What about the steps of the enemy? Y'all still here? I'm, I'm trying to make sure y'all get this. Why not ask God to guide the heart of the rapist so that he don't rape your child? Y'all hear me? Do we ask God to bless the school bus driver and keep him safe? Or you to ask him to keep your child safe on the bus? You mean you got on an airplane and ask God to bless you but then ask him to bless the power? Lord, don't let him have no heart attack. Lord, bless the mechanics who work on this plane to make sure they had the knowledge and the wisdom to fix everything. You land up in the hospital, sick as you can be, head to surgery, and say, Lord, be with me in my surgery. But you never pray for the surgeon. You begin to see where I'm going here. The widow's plan only considered her ability and her limitations. She based the life of her and her son only on what she had and what she could do. She said, I'm going to do my best, all I can, and I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to take these sticks, cook these whole cakes, we're going to eat them, be happy for a while, and lay down and die. Her longevity was based on what she could do. But Solomon said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Need not that only understanding in all our ways and not him, and he shall direct that path. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bone. Man's extremity is God's opportunity. And your distress suits God just right. I need some help, New Salem. It's time for us to stop planning to die and start looking up to live. Yeah. It's time for us to learn how to lean on the Lord. Yeah. When we allow him, we'll find the keys to the kingdom. Yeah. When we allow the Lord, we'll find the whole armor of God. When we allow the Lord, we'll find power beyond power. Yeah. We'll be able to build plans for life and not for death. Be able to build plans on God's power and not our power. The word says, my God says, my word has gone out for me. And it's not come back to me void. But shall accomplish that purpose which I sent it out. Somebody said, time is built. We still transition. No other earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Trust in him who will not leave you. Whatsoever yield will bring. If by earthly friends forsake, still more closely to him clean. You got to rely on the Lord. Then if you rely on the Lord, then you learn, you trust, you learn how to render unto the Lord. Her plans was to eat up her old blessings and then die. Let that sink in. Her plan was to eat up her old blessings. And die. By eating up her old blessing and dying, she wasn't going to live to see her new blessing. Preach this morning, brother. Y'all hear this? Hear with me? Whatever we feed ourselves first, we're eating up our old blessings. Come in the morning with them two fish and five loaves. Don't feed yourself, give it to Jesus. And let him feed other folk. And you will find more power than you ever need. Five foolish virgins ran out of all because they spent on burnt it all on themselves. Primping in the mirror. Making sure they look good. Didn't have time to wait on the groom because they ate up their blessings. Watch this. 
every gift of God contains a seed. Y'all missed that. That's why he used Jesus as a seed. Because seeds reproduce. And if you plant God's gift in the right place in the right order, it will reproduce more gifts. Y'all hear with me? The seed is always found in the first part of the fruit, of God's fruit. Because the seed is on the inside. That's why the Bible says, man, the outside of God's seed is hard. That's the first part. Y'all, 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 y'all hear me? Before you were forming your mother's womb, the first thing that appeared was a heartbeat. The outside came later. So the seed is always the first part of the plant. And so the seed is always the God part. Y'all hear me? And it's, it will reproduce over and over. And so we must learn how to give God seed offerings. I mean, I got to cut through the other stuff to get him a seed offering down the path where it hurt. See, I got to injure the plant. The fruit to get to this. Y'all miss y'all, y'all missing me. See, I can't get to the seed without tearing open the fruit. So to give God the part of my blessing, well, I got to tear it open. Give him part of me, he I got to tear myself open. To let him have the part of me that he can use to reproduce. Y'all still here? You must give God a seed offering over the wounds of heaven to pour out a blessing. Seed offering will give you the keys of the kingdom that will allow you to sow blessed and blind and bind. If we sow to the flesh, we reap corruption, which is death. And we sow to the spirit, we reap life. And let me tell you this. God does not accept seconds. While God does have goodwill, he ain't the goodwill. Y'all don't like me this morning. He ain't no second-hand God. If you don't want God to give you a second-hand blessing, why you give him a second-hand offering? Listen. He ain't no second-hand God. And to eat the first part of your blessing means you eating up God's resources. Now, let me make sure you get to them. Say this stuff. When you eat the first part, you're also eating the last part. Because God see he can't trust you. But when you allow God to eat the first part every time, you'll never eat your last part because every time you turn around another blessing, You want to keep on eating? Keep on feeding God first. Watch this. It don't matter how good that woman could cook. That's going to be her last break piece of bread. Don't matter how she seasoned, how much butter she put on it, how many eggs she used in it. Some people like sweet bread. Don't matter how much sugar she put in it. Might have been Martha White or Jeff Mix. It don't matter. It was going to be her last. She could have baked it, fried it, boiled it, sauteed the grill. It, it was still going to be her last. Barbecue sauce, hot sauce, or tartar sauce. It was going to be her last. Y'all hear with me? What kind of food would eat up all the corn? And not feed the goose who the land golden eggs. If you fed the goose, the goose gonna lay eggs, you can buy some more corn. 
How selfish can you be? You're going to starve the goose. Only fool would have a milk cow and not getting no water. Y'all look me crazy. When we withhold from God, you're robbing yourself. She had to overcome her fear of starvation to feed him one first. And Satan uses your fear to make you rob God. We must face fear to find favor in the Lord. We must face defeat to find victory in the Lord. We must face death to find life in the Lord. We must face law to find gain in the Lord. That's why Paul said, for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Technically, we can't rob God. We only rob ourselves. Y'all hear me? He says, give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure. Press down, shake the other, run over. Shall men so in your book? It ain't gonna fall out the sky. He had folks walking up again. You stuff. I'm through. You got to learn how to, to be blessed through your distress. Rely on the Lord. Then run unto the Lord. Finally, you can rest in the Lord. I'm through. Christ did not come to save us from suffering. He died to save us from our sins. You follow him, you're going to suffer. He said, weeping may endure for a night. Joke up in the morning, but weeping will come in the night. He said, in this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I've overcome the world. But you still going to have tribulation. He didn't come to make a way around your distress. He came to make a way through it. And most of us can't get to our blessings. Because we're afraid to walk through our problem. It's the problem of the Red Sea. But they didn't walk through it. To get to the promised land. And y'all here with me. Then they had a little problem at Jericho. But the Bible said when they blew the trumps and gave God praise, the wall came down. And the same wall that held them out is the same wall that became a sidewalk to let them walk into the promised land. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because thou art with me, and I learned how to rest in him. He said he lead me beside the still wall. That's rest. He made me lie down in green pastures. I'm resting in him. Ain't God all right? He said when I laid down and I drunk the still wall, I begin to see goodness and mercy. And I and let me sleep at night. Some of you got so much distress. You're laying awake all night. Tossing and turning on a tear stained pillow. Walking the floor all night long. But the Lord said, Come unto me all either labor. And a heavy laden I will give you rest. Ain't God alright? The songwriter said, When you give him the best of your service. Yeah, you can rest in the Lord. You can get rest because in him there is no failure. You can rest because he is the on time God. Job said he may not come when you want him, but the Lord sure will be on time. You can take rest because we serve a God who can do exceeding and abundantly above all we ask or think. He will give you rest. He'll give you one of the rest. 
He'll give you glorious rest. He'll give you sanctified rest. He'll give you sweet rest. Ain't God all right? If you're thirsty in his life, he said, I am the living water, which coming down from heaven. If you drink of this water, you'll never thirst again. He will give you rest. If you're hungry down in last meal, he said, I am the living bread. If any man eat of this bread, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know uh, what your problems are. Uh, I don't know uh, what's driving your tears. Uh, but one thing I know, uh, if you trust uh, and never doubt, uh, the Lord will truly uh, bring you out. Uh, you can take your burden uh, to the Lord uh, and leave him there. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, I don't know uh, how you feel about it. Uh, but I love the Lord uh, because he heard my cry. Uh, and he pitied her every wrong uh, if just had been paid this morning. Uh, I'd be somewhere in my sleeping in my grave. Uh, but Lord, uh, I want to thank you uh, that one more time uh, you look beyond my faults uh, and you saw all of my knees. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, and God, uh, if you look over uh, what I did yesterday, uh, I'm not worried uh, about today. Uh, and I'm not worried uh, about tomorrow uh, because the same blood uh, that brought me over uh, is the same blood uh, that gon' carry me through. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, yeah, my Lord, I, I will cry sometimes. Uh, but crying ain't nothing uh, but my train back home. Uh, I walk the floor sometimes, uh, but that's all right. Uh, sometimes, y'all, my burden get heavy uh, and my way get dark. Uh, but I'm going to hold on uh, just a little while longer. Uh, because after a while, uh, the Lord, uh, he will uh, make a way somehow. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, and you can't. Down and up because I know uh, too much about him. Uh, when I look back uh, over my life, uh, I begin to realize uh, he was always there uh, through the storm and the rain. Uh, he was always there uh, through my heartache and pain. Uh, and can't nobody uh, hold me like Jesus. Can't nobody uh, do me like Jesus. Can't nobody uh, let me like Jesus. So I'm going to hold on. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, Every once in a while, I, I feel uh, like going in the town. Uh, but I go down on my knees uh, and I plead the blood. I cry, Father, I stretch it, my hand to thee. Uh, no other help I know. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, he did it before uh, and he can do it again. Uh, I'm gone, New Salem. Uh, but I want you to know uh, I've had some good days, y'all. Uh, and I've had some bad days. Uh, Show up. And I'm to heal the climb up. But when I look around uh, and I think things over, uh, all of my good days uh, outweigh my bad days. Uh, so I won't complain. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, every time uh, I turn around, uh, another blessing uh, keep coming my way. Uh, he keeps on blessing uh, over and over again. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, ain't God all right? And I'm going to tell God, while the blood of my name, Lord, I want to thank you, man, because you did it, and you didn't have to do it. Somebody said I couldn't take it. Somebody said I couldn't make it. Somebody said I couldn't hold on. But the Lord, he was on my side. I've had doors closed in my face. I've been lied on. I've been talked about. I've I've been criticized, I've been scandalized, but through it all, I learned uh, how to trust in Jesus. I learned uh, how to trust in God. Uh, ain't God all right? I don't need uh, to praise Him by myself, but I need somebody to help me to Jesus. Uh, 
if you know uh, that God can probably do uh, if you know uh, that the Lord has helped you, if you know uh, he was always by your side, if you know uh, he didn't make it by yourself, if you've been sick uh, and he raised up, uh, if you've been hungry and the Lord fed you, if you've been heartbroken and he mended your heart, uh, you ought to stand on your feet uh, and tell God thank you. Tell him thank you. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, Thank you, Jesus. I'm through. I'm through. I've been blessed through my distress, through my heartache. I've been blessed through my tears. I've been blessed through my pain. Victory, but I'm marked. 
marching on to victory because my life is in God's hand and I'm going to allow him to bless me through my distress. Let us all stand. John's birthday. Come on. Your wife, get, get the mic, dog. Get the mic. It's Sean's birthday. Come around here, Sean. Come, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. I'm just And follow my instruction. Wait a minute. I follow my instruction. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, dog. Follow my instruction. Letter. When you get through singing, get you some sugar. Popcorn, he never butter, man. 
Anybody else? Got time for one more? Nobody else? I'm enjoying this gun bless your heart. Listen. Never leave church without smiling. Don't get there with that kind of victory. Always find a reason to smile before we leave. Now may the grace of God love Jesus Christ. Speak the beauty of the Holy Spirit, the body, now and ever. Let us all sing together. Amen. Silly old step is missed. Sister Collins, she has to make an announcement.